Have you ever wanted to do something so important and you keep on delaying or postponing and you end up not doing it at all? I'm here to talk to you guys today. Well, us. Because I kind of like do it every time. Yeah, but I'm getting better by the day. It's been a while since I posted anything here and I deeply apologize to you guys for keeping you waiting. Now I don't want to start coming up with excuses because today's topic kind of talks about anything I might say. Okay as I said something we all do and this thing we all do is called procrastination. Procrastination is the act of delaying, postponing or putting something aside most of the time intentionally. In other words it is deciding not to do something when you're supposed to do. Deciding to delay or postpone till some other time, which some might call the right time, and which might never come. Procrastination is a trap that many of us fall into. In fact, 95% of the whole world procrastinate to some degree. While it may be comforting for you to know you're not alone, it can also be so grievous to realize how much it can hold you back. And also, procrastination is of different forms. Now, according to my own research, I found that there are two kinds of procrastination. Now the first one, limited procrastination. This is a kind of procrastination that has a deadline. So you find a way and manage to complete your task in the last minute. Now just for example, you are given a homework in school and you decided not to do the homework at home until the following day you come to school and do it in class at the last minute before the teacher arrives. Now the question is, what stopped you from doing it at home? Was it because you wanted to watch TV or maybe your friends came over? The whole thing is, you were given a time frame for your task, but you decided to constrict your time and rush it at the last minute. So for the second one, limited procrastination, it's kind of the most dangerous one. There is no time frame set for this one. It is an open-ended kind of procrastination without a deadline. So your mind is at ease with any comfortable situation it finds itself. As I said, the most dangerous, because sometimes people might decide to live in that same comfort zone their whole life without achieving anything. And sometimes procrastination is kind of confused with laziness. They're very different. Procrastination is an active process. You choose to do something other than the thing you're supposed to be doing. In contrast, laziness suggests apathy, inactiveness, and the unwillingness to act or do anything. The first step to overcoming procrastination is to recognize that you are doing it and use appropriate strategies to manage and overcome it. There are thousands of reasons why people procrastinate. And these are some of the six reasons why we procrastinate. Number one is lack of motivation. Motivation is the key to igniting any form of success. Lack of motivation can result into the loss of focus or even depression. And still on the matter, it is not the same as laziness. When someone is lazy, they do not want to try or do any task, even when they have the energy to do so. The person who is unmotivated due to depression usually wants to do the work, but then again, they feel like they can't. Number two, absence of structure. The lack of imposed direction that has become common might contribute to the increase in procrastination. For example, you're supposed to do something, but you don't yet have the full understanding of what to do or how to do your task. What do you do? You procrastinate. Number three is unpleasant tasks. Well, the most common of procrastination is a task that is considered as difficult. It is then considered as boring or not interesting. And every person has their own certain limits to interest and boredom. Just like on a scale, one person might have a greater boredom resistance level, while the other might easily get bored, which leads to procrastination. Number four is perfectionism. Sometimes we tend to delay an activity thinking that it is not yet perfect for us, perfect for them, perfect for who knows who. Instead we give it more time, postpone to some other time, which might lead to an unknown time. Just so you know, there is nothing like being perfect. It is just a lie we tell ourselves that practice makes perfect. We just get better by the day, but there is nothing like being perfect. Number five, the fear of the unknown. 
We often create scenarios in our minds of things that might happen to us or become of us when we try something or do something. But we never take time to think about the positive aspects of it. And those kind of negative thoughts sometimes leads to anxiety and depression, which also leads to not doing the whole thing. And finally, number six, distractions. Oh hey, wait, I think I have a notification on my Facebook. Someone would have definitely liked my Instagram photo by now. Hey, I met this new girl not long ago. I'm sure she might have left me a message. Blah, blah, blah. All those kind of distractions takes us away from what is really crucial. And that brief lapse and her direction of attention could very well stretch out into a whole nother hour of non-productivity. Then again, here are some six ways to either limit or avoid procrastination. Number one, know your power hour. When best do you work with maximum effort? Maximum effort. There really is such a thing as being either a morning, an afternoon, or an evening person. Find the hour that makes you feel at your best. The hour that you feel at your optimal mode of functioning. And set aside that time to do your most urgent and demanding work. The power hour can be just one hour of full concentration and productivity. Number two, set goals. If the first thing you do in the morning is to perform the most challenging task, then every other thing that comes after it would seem less depressing and distressing. Knowing you've done the most demanding task of all your tasks doesn't only take you a step closer to achieving your goal, but also it gives you a motivational boost. And also tasks might seem so broad when they're bulky. So break your goals into smaller pieces, then give each and every one of them a time frame and a deadline. Make your goals very specific, that way they won't be broad and bulky anymore. Number three, flex your schedules. Make your schedules less rigid and restricting. Some days might be busier than the others. Instead, prioritize and delegate when necessary. A rigid and inflexible schedule not only tempts you to procrastinate, but also makes your whole daily task seem more overwhelming. Number four, disconnect. Try limiting your distractions, and that includes the people who draw your attention away from the task at hand. Disconnect from the internet, put your phone on silent, and tell every other person that you are not to be disturbed during these times. If not, your brain will find an opportunity to draw away from the task at hand so don't give it that opportunity. As Dan Depani says, as soon as we control our awareness, we control our energy flows. And as soon as we control our energy flows, we control what is manifesting in our lives. Number five, never try to be perfect. I won't start because it won't be perfect. When is it ever going to be perfect? Perfectionism is a partner in crime to procrastination. Wanting to do a good job is great. But striving for perfection rarely helps. Paralysis by analysis occurs when we absolutely must have every single instance of information before making a decision. Don't waste all your valuable time. Take a leap. You never know where you'll land. And number six, don't punish yourself. Instead, reward yourself. We will still end up procrastinating on some occasions. It happens sometimes to the best of us. Don't punish yourself if you do. Your responsibilities and demands are challenging enough. Cut yourself a little slack. Celebrate small victories for having achieving a little task. Let your brain know that you were rewarded for focusing and achieving a single goal. Give yourself a break now, would ya? Okay, I'm gonna post a link in my description of a TED talk by Tim Urban. Well, he explained procrastination in the best way ever so you make sure you watch that video now if you still feel the urge to procrastinate here are some questions you should probably ask yourself what am I waiting for what am I afraid of what could I possibly achieve by doing this what could happen if I ignore the situation what is the worst possible consequence that could happen what would I gain in the long run by refusing to do this how often do people actually die from doing this? Am I trying to convince myself of something that is not true? Am I scared of the process or the results? 
Am I the first person to actually try this or would I be the last? And lastly, am I actually scared of this or was I told it was scary? You can take your time and think about it, but just don't take too long because time is valuable because you'll never know until you try. So just take the first step. So next time you wake up in the morning and feel like not getting up from bed, feel like wasting your whole time doing nothing, here's a tip for you. Just count down from five and just jump out of bed, just like this. Five, four, three, two, one, watch me.